the intuition is a lot different than this is the way it worked in the past, and this is, I know this will work, and da da da. It's saying let go of all that and just trust to be guided in the present moment. Let your judgment thoughts come up and look at them, positive and negative, and, and realize that both extremes are, are part of the judgment. In other words, a lot of times the thing is, it's like I want to just let go of all my negative judgments, okay? And I want to put positive judgments or, or positive thoughts in place of them. And the Course is saying that your positive judgments will hurt you as much as your negative judgments. Which is a pretty, I mean, that's a lot, that differentiates it sometimes from other spiritual paths where it's just bring the positive in and, and try to get the negative out. It's the positive expectations that we have, the, the hierarchy of illusions that we get so defensive about, you know. If, if we're really identified with our looks, in you know, body sense, or our car, or our house, or whatever, when something seems to threaten us, that we just flip out. What I hear you saying too is that for there to be a positive, you have to have have to have negative. Uh, the opposites and, again. And, and that um, to look at them both equally and not make judgments on either of them. Is that what I'm? Yeah. It's kind of like with Zen, where they say, "Watch the trains go by." Some of the trains will be positive judgments and negative judgments. Um, it, the Course is just saying that we're, spiritually we're very little children. That we think we can tell the difference between pain and pleasure. I mean, that's, in this world it seems obvious. You know, we can tell the difference, it seems like, between pain and pleasure. You pursue one, you avoid the other. And what Jesus is saying is the ego never tells, it lets it into awareness that, that by, by pursuing pain and pleasure, both of them reinforce the body as being real. And by reinforcing the body as being real, that still keeps us keeps the guilt and the belief system denied and and keeps us from waking up to our spiritual reality. Now, and that's a that's a pretty deep idea, but but ultimately it's not a path of, of relinquishment or sacrifice in the sense that when we start to get miracle minded, when we let the spirit come through us and we start to connect and join, we start to experience such a joy, an intrinsic joy, not a joy that's based on getting something external to satisfy us or gratify us, but it's just like a momentum starts to grow. And we feel like we're fulfilling our function. It's like, oh, this is what I came here for. This is, oh yeah, now I'm remembering. And then the joy starts and the peace starts. And then the other stuff just, the, the addictions and the whatever just fall off because, because the momentum just takes over. Which I, I mean, I, that makes a lot of sense to me because I know I have struggled with a lot of things about, you know, pain, pleasure, gratifying, repressing, indulging. You know, in this world it's kind of like, oh, I grow up with indulgence, so oh, I shouldn't be doing that. I'm, I'm going over the boundary lines here. Pull it back. Oh, I'm repressing. I really would like to be doing it. I'm thinking about that all the time. But, you know, and you can see Jesus is saying the miracle just brings our mind into a real clear focus. The more, the more we can do this, the closer we can pull in to the perfect to the miracle. center. Mm -hmm. The miracle is, is the option. I mean, there's indulgence, there's repression, and then there's the miracle. The, the indulgence and repression don't go anywhere. It's like we stay horizontal. Oh, yeah. But the miracle goes up. <laughs> yeah. We go back up to the source.